friends, uh, let us discuss the relation between KP and KC and also we will discuss the Lee Chatelier's principle so that we can predict the direction that is whether a forward reaction is favored or backward reaction is favored when you increase or decrease the temperature or when you increase or decrease the pressure or concentration of a system. KP is related to KC as KP is equal to KC into RT raised to delta N where delta N is number of moles of gases product minus the number of moles of gases reactant. I repeat delta N is number of moles of gases product minus the number of moles of gases reactant. That is only you should consider the gases reactants as well as the product. Then Lee Chatelier's principle. The Lee Chatelier's principle states that if a constraint like change in pressure, temperature or concentration is applied to the system that is at equilibrium, the system tries to nullify its effect by shifting the direction of the equilibrium that is either by favoring the forward reaction or the backward reaction. Let us consider an example and let us see how the change in pressure or temperature affects the equilibrium. Consider a reaction 2A plus B in equilibrium with C plus D. Let the reaction be exothermic that is delta H for this reaction let us consider to be as negative that is during the process the energy is released. Let us consider all the reactants and products are in their gas phases that is A, B and C are in the gas phases. Let us discuss the effect of temperature first. If you look at the reaction if I consider the forward reaction for forward reaction delta H is negative that means forward reaction is exothermic that is if the reaction is exothermic then energy will be released if energy is released what happens to the temperature is the temperature of the system increases that is for this reaction the forward reaction is exothermic that is the temperature of the system increases if the forward reaction is exothermic then the backward reaction will be endothermic that means the temperature of the system decreases the backward reaction will be endothermic hence energy will be absorbed and the temperature of the system is temperature of the system decreases that is forward reaction is exothermic and the backward reaction is endothermic. Let us consider the system is at equilibrium. If I increase the pressure of the system, the system will try to nullify its effect. Nullify its effect means if I try to increase the temperature of the system, the system will try to decrease the temperature. How to decrease the temperature of the system? It favors the backward reaction. Why it favors the backward reaction? Because backward reaction is endothermic and if backward reaction takes place, then the temperature of the system decreases. Similarly, if I try to decrease the temperature of the system, the system will try to increase the temperature and it favors the forward reaction because in the forward reaction is accompanied by increase in temperature. Let us consider the effect of pressure as well as the concentration. Pressure depends upon number of moles. If you look at the reaction, 3 moles of reactant, I mean 2 moles of A and 1 mole of B, that is 3 moles of reactants will are giving 2 moles of product. That is forward reaction, if you consider the number of mole decreases. If the number of mole decreases, what happens to the pressure is pressure of the system decreases because pressure depends upon the number of gases moles. If you take consider the backward reaction, in the backward reaction, 2 moles of the product is getting converted into 3 moles. That is the number of gases mole is increasing. Hence, the pressure of the system increases during a backward reaction. That is, if I try to increase the pressure, the system will try to decrease the pressure and it favors the forward reaction. If I try to decrease the pressure, the system will try to increase the pressure because it wants to nullify the effect. Hence, it favors the backward reaction. So, this is the effect of temperature and the effect of pressure. Similarly, the effect of concentration. If I try to increase the concentration of A, the system will try to decrease the concentration of A and it, it does by favoring the forward reaction because in the forward reaction A gets converted to C and D. If I try to increase the concentration of the product that is C or D, the system will try to decrease the concentration of C or D, hence it favors the backward reaction. So this is the effect of temperature, pressure and concentration on the equilibrium. We will solve some problems related to this.
Friends, let us discuss the next question. The question goes like this. The yield of products in the gases reaction A2 plus 2B in equilibrium with C plus Q kilojoules of energy is liberated would be higher at option A, high temperature and high pressure, option B, high temperature, low pressure, option C, low temperature and high pressure, option D, low temperature and low pressure. Let us try to analyze the equation first. Let us see what are the conditions and then we will we'll try to find the answer for this. This problem can be solved by the Lee Chatelier's principle. Let us consider this equation. A2 plus 2B in equilibrium with C plus Q kilojoules of energy is liberated. A2 is a gas, B is a gas, C is also a gas. Now, if they had mentioned delta H and they had written plus, then it would have been an endothermic reaction. If they had mentioned delta H and negative, then it would be an exothermic reaction. They have not mentioned delta H here. Instead of that, they have written plus Q kilojoules on the product side. That means during the reaction, energy is released. That means forward reaction is exothermic. If forward reaction is exothermic, then during the process, the energy will be released. If energy is released, then the temperature of the system increases. If a forward reaction is exothermic, then the backward reaction should be endothermic. If backward reaction is endothermic, then energy will be absorbed and the temperature of the system will decrease. Now, we will try to analyze this. Now, if I want to increase the concentration of the product formed, I need to decrease the temperature. Why it should decrease the temperature? If the temperature of the system is decreased, the system will try to increase the temperature and hence it favors forward reaction because forward reaction, the temperature of the system increases. So, we need to maintain low temperature because if the temperature is low, the system will try to increase the temperature of the system and it will favor the forward reaction. Let us try to analyze the variation with pressure. If you look at the reaction, A2 is a gas, B is a gas. So, 3 moles of gas, they give 1 mole of product. That means, Forward reaction is accompanied by decrease in the number of moles. So, as the forward reaction takes place, pressure of the system decreases because the number of moles decreases. So, if you look at the backward reaction, 1 mole gives 3 mole, hence pressure of the system increases. Now, to increase the concentration of the product, I should increase the pressure. Why? Because if you increase the pressure, the system will try to decrease the pressure and the reaction will take place in a forward direction. So, hence the condition of pressure required is high pressure. So, the condition required is low temperature and high pressure. Hence, option C is the right answer. Uh, let us start the next question. I will read the question for you. At a 360 Kelvin for equilibrium hydrogen plus sulfur in equilibrium with H2S, Kc is equal to 8 into 10 to the power minus 2. If 0 0.3 mole of hydrogen and 2 moles of sulfur as are heated to 360 Kelvin in a 2 litre vessel, what will be the partial pressure of H2S approximately at equilibrium? The options given are option A. 0.32 atmosphere, option B 0.43 atmosphere, option C 0.62 atmosphere and option D 4 atmosphere. Students, so we have solved a similar type of question where we calculated the partial pressure of PCL3. The formula that we used was partial pressure of PCL3 was number of moles of PCL3 divided by total number of moles at equilibrium into the total pressure. But we cannot use the formula here because they have not mentioned the total pressure. So, you can calculate the pressure of hydro H2S gas at equilibrium by using the formula PV is equal to NRT where P is the pressure, V is the volume, N is number of moles 
R is the gas constant, the value is given as 0 0.08 and T the temperature is mentioned as 360 Kelvin. You can calculate the partial pressure of H2S by using this formula. Uh, volume is given, R is given, T is given. The only thing that we need to determine is the value of N that is number of moles of H2S at equilibrium. Let us try to calculate the number of moles of e at equilibrium and then we will substitute it. Now, the equation goes like this. Hydrogen plus sulfur in equilibrium with H2S where hydrogen is gas, sulfur solid and H2S is also a gas. The initial moles, hydrogen number of initial number of moles, initial moles of hydrogen given is 0 0.3 mole, sulfur is 2 mole and H2S is not present. At equilibrium, let us consider the number of moles of hydrogen that reacts is X. So, number of moles reacted, number of moles formed. <coughs> let us consider the number of moles of hydrogen reacted be X, the number of moles of sulphur reacted will be X because one mole of hydrogen when reacts at the same time, one mole of sulphur reacts to give you one mole of H2S. But we require the concentration or the number of moles at equilibrium at equilibrium. If you have started with 0.3 mole and if, if x is reacted, the number of moles reacted will be 0.3 minus x. So, sulphur will be 2 minus x and H2S will be formed. So, it will be the value of x. So, we need to calculate the value of x. Why? Because we require the number of moles of H2S at equilibrium. Once we calculate the value of x, you can substitute here and you will get the required answer. Now, how to calculate the value of x now? So, they have given us the Kc value. So, we will try to relate uh, equilibrium constant with the concentration of a reactant and product at equilibrium. For this equation, I can write equilibrium constant Kc is equal to concentration of H2S divided by concentration of H2 into concentration of sulphur. But sulphur is in its pure solid form and in its solid form, the concentration of pure solid is equal to unity. So, I will neglect that. So, Kc will be equal to H2S divided by concentration of hydrogen at equilibrium. H2S at equilibrium is X. The concentration of hydrogen at equilibrium is 0.3 minus X and the value of Kc is given as 8 into 10 to the power minus 2. That is, it is equal to 0 0.08. If I simplify it, it becomes 0 0.024 minus 0 0.08 into x is equal to x. On simplification, you get x is equal to 0 0.022 mole. This is the value of x and it is nothing but the number of moles of H2S at equilibrium. So, we have the equation PV is equal to NRT. So, partial pressure of H2S is equal to number of moles of H2S divided by volume into R into T. And the number of moles at H2S is uh, H2S at equilibrium is 0.022 divided by volume mentioned is 2 liters into R value that is 0.08 into temperature that is 360 Kelvin. On calculation, you get the value equal to 0.32 atmosphere. Hence, option A is the right answer. Dear friends, new DVG YouTube channel subscribe maadi, friends go heli, videos and